With this method, you'll be able to turn any curve into this liquid blobby goodness. So if you haven't seen it, there's this design trend that I've noticed um, of text or other shapes that look like liquid. Here are some examples that I found on Pinterest. And for those who are interested, I will be showing how to smooth out bumpy meshes with geometry nodes in this video. So here we are in Blender version 3.3. First thing I'm gonna do is add in a curve with Shift A, go to Curve, Bezier. And I wanna draw something that's gonna look good um, for our example. So tab into edit mode, delete it, and choose the draw tool right here. Now I am going to leave it set to cursor up here, um, but if you want to draw onto like a wall or the surface of another, another object, you can set this to surface. So I'll just draw a squiggle like that, and I'll draw some lines kind of going through it. Uh, I want the lines to be intersecting like that, because um, they are going to merge together, and this will help us test it out. So now we can go to geometry nodes and later I will bring in a reference so we can have a nice piece of Chrome text. So let's add a new geometry nodes tree right here. And first thing we want to do is bring in a curve to points node. We can set the resolution right here. So I'm going to change this to length and you can see they're a little closer together now. The points are really big, but don't worry too much about that because we're going to add in a points to volume node right here and then we can turn the volume into a mesh. So bring in a volume to mesh right here. Then it's basically going to look like your curve has been remeshed. So there are a few different values that I like to change in here to make it easier to use. First of all, I like to set the resolution to size. We can change the voxel size in here now. And I like the length and the voxel size to always be the same amount. So we can do that easily with a value node. Put in whatever value you want right here. I'll set it to 0.025. Be careful um, with higher resolution because if you have the radius um, too big, it will end up adding a lot of geometry and it starts getting pretty slow. So you can see how dense that is. Be careful with that. I'll have this set to something smaller like 0.1 for now. And when you have this set to grid, it's going to pay attention to the voxel size and just use that. Um, I like to leave it set to grid because it's kind of more automatic. If you turn the adaptivity up, that will lower the poly count like that, but it gets pretty jagged. Um, and so I don't use it a lot for something like this that I want to look very smooth. You will immediately notice how bumpy it looks. It doesn't look very smooth. So we can smooth this out and there is kind of a trick to this. Um, it's using a node called the uh, edge vertices node and it has position one and position two. So hopefully this makes sense when I explain it, but basically every edge is going to have two points on it, two vertices, and that's what these two points are referencing. So it's going to look at the first position and the second position. It's going to do this for every edge. What we want to do is bring in a set position node, and we want to average out these two positions so that the position of both of them is more similar. We're just going to get the average of both, and this will make the mesh more smooth. So to find the average, we just want to add these two together with a vector math node. And then we need to divide this by however many inputs. We only have two inputs, so we're gonna divide it by two. Bring in a vector math divide, set that to two, and plug that into the position. You can see as soon as we plug it in, it will smooth very slightly. So it doesn't smooth very much, but we can smooth it out a lot more by basically just repeating this. You just have another set position, and then we'll plug this in like that and it smooths just a little bit more. I want it to be smoothed up to a hundred times. So to make this easier, we can just select all of these and hit Control G to put them in a group like this. Okay, so the way that I like to do this and the way that I found is the least painful is by collapsing this set position node to make it much smaller. And then we can duplicate it. So I'll just drag it down a little like that. And then we can hit Shift R That'll repeat the last action, which was duplicating. So now we have three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now we have ten of these. We can hook all of these up with all right click and drag. This is a node wrangler thing. So if you don't have the node wrangler installed, just go to uh, edit preferences, add ons, and turn the node wrangler on. So we have ten of them here. And I'm just going to disconnect the group output for now. And I'll add a reroute node with shift, right click, and drag. And I want to connect this to each of the set positions also. 
And this is just going to be the first 10. And then we're going to duplicate all of these 10 times so that we end up with 100 of them. You know, it takes, a, it takes a little while, but it's not too bad. So now select all of these with the reroute node too, and duplicate it and move it on the X like this. And now we can do the same thing, shift R until we have 10 of these. So we have two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. All we have to do is make sure that the last one and the first one, they're all connected like this. And we also need to make sure that these are all hooked up also so that they're actually getting smoothed out. They're getting the right position information. So now we should be able to bring the group output back over here. And when we plug this one in, you can see it's much smoother now. And what I like about this is that where they intersect, it gets very round and circular like that. And it ends up with just this really nice looking effect. I wanna be able to control how strong the smoothing is. So to do this, we'll bring in one more, one last set position node. We'll plug it in right here. And I want to compare this smoothing position to our original position. And we're gonna do that with a mix RGB node. And we'll plug this position right here, which is our smoothing position into color two. And we need to capture the position before we start smoothing stuff out. So we can bring in a capture attribute right here and our position. Our position is a vector. So we need to change this to vector, plug it into the value like that. And we want to use this attribute right here. We'll just drag it over and use that for color one like that. Now, when we plug the color into position right here, this slider will allow us to decide how much smoothing we want right here. And if we hit tab to leave this node group, um, I want to be able to control it from the outside. So to do that, we can just take our group input and duplicate it with shift D and we'll bring it all the way over here and make sure one of the empty sockets is plugged into the factor like that. Now from the outside, we can change the smoothness like that. So I think we can probably drop the radius a little more. Um, let's turn this all the way down for now. And we'll set this to maybe like 0 0.05. So now it's a little more narrow and our mesh isn't super dense. And right now this is pretty flat. So if we select it and tab into edit mode, we can grab the draw tool and set this to surface. You can connect all of these up. And if you do it at an angle that's not just straight on, you can see it will not be on the same plane. And you can get some nice results doing this like that. I think it looks really neat. Just, you know, draw some through like that. So I'm going to draw one just not connected to anything that we can use as reference. I like to make it so that the ends can be blobby, like more round and bulbous. Um, to do that, we basically need to find the start and the end point of the curve. But you can see uh, over here, it turns into points. So we have to make sure we capture that while it's still a curve right here. We can grab a capture attribute and a spline parameter. And what we want is the factor right here. We can plug that into the value. And now we can take this attribute and plug it into the radius. But if we do that, it's going to be really big and I don't want to crash Blender. These meshes get really dense really fast. So instead of doing that, I'll plug it into a map range first right here, map range, and plug the attribute into the value. And we can use the two min and the two max as our minimum and maximum thickness. So let's set the maximum to 0.1 and the minimum to 0 0.05 and plug it in and see what it looks like. So what it's gonna do is make one end thick and one end thin. And if we want to customize this a little more, uh, after the attribute right here, we can plug in a float curve like that. And what I like to do is bring both endpoints up to the top add one in the middle. And when you hold control, it'll snap to the grid like that. I like to put this in the center and all the way down. And now you can see it's thick at one end and at the other, but it's skinny in the middle like that. And again, to change how thick the ends are, that's gonna be this maximum value right here. So if you set it to 0 0.05, it will you know, just be the same thickness throughout. But we can turn this up a little higher, like 0.2, and it will be very blobby. I think our original values were pretty good, so we'll leave it set that way. If you'd like to be able to change the thickness at any of these points, you can use this radius right here, but um, because of the way we set it up, it doesn't work. We can make it work though. Um, basically, all you have to do is capture another attribute at the beginning, and we're going to capture the radius, which is just going to give us this value up here. So we can plug that in, and then we can use this attribute 
to control the radius right here. So by default, the radius is going to be set to one and we're going to bring in a math node set to add right here. And I just want to clear these, make both of those zero and drop it in so that it doesn't, you know, change the radius like that. So if we plug this in directly, it's going to add one and we don't want it to do that. We want it to basically add nothing when it's set to the default. So we need to add another node first. We'll set it to subtract and then we can plug in the attribute to the first slot. And I want to subtract one right there. Now we can plug this in. Nothing should happen until we make this radius go above one. Now we can use this uh, select one at the top, select any of these points and turn the radius up like that. And you can see it's going to make it thicker. You can also use Alt S like that. That's the shortcut. And if you want to not be limited to, you know, a single point like that, you can turn on proportional editing. And I like to have that set to connected only. That way it's not going to influence stuff over here. But yeah, and now you can see when you scroll, it will start influencing other points like that. So this will be pretty helpful for making bubble letters the way you want to. You have more control instead of being confined to just the thick ends right there. We want to add smooth shading so we can set shade smooth. And I want to add a material so this actually looks like Chrome. So we can add a set material node and we don't have a material yet. So we need to add one. So over here we can add a new one and I'll name it something like Chrome and then we can add it over here also. And let's go over to look dev or to the render view. And I don't want to be able to see the background. Um, so I'll go over to the render properties tab and down to film right here. And then you can turn transparent on and that'll make the background transparent like this back over to material properties. All we have to do is turn the metallic all the way up like that. And we can turn the roughness down really low. I'm going to turn it all the way down, but you can just have it set really low. And now it's going to look like metal like that really shiny metal and when it comes to things that are really reflective like this it's really going to make a big difference what your uh, environment texture is or your hdri so let's add a new one in um i'll just go over here and i'm just going to delete it i'm just going to hit x and add a new one uh, by default it's going to be a solid color which looks really boring for uh for reflective materials like this but we can go over to the shading tab and make sure you set this from object to world and that will bring us over to, you know, the world shader. And I'm going to make this not transparent so we can actually see the background. So to bring in an HDRI, I'll just use an environment texture and plug the color in right here. And we can load in an image. So I have a bunch that are already saved on my computer and I got pretty much all of them from Polyhaven. Uh, you can get free HDRs there, HDRIs. So the one that I'm looking for is going to have grass and a blue sky because I like the reflections that come with that. And you can see now it's loaded in the background like that. And if you want the reflections to be more vibrant, you can add in a hue saturation node. Now, if you're rendering the background, this might change things to look uh, pretty unnatural like that. But I think for the reflections, it looks pretty cool. And because I was planning on rendering this transparent, I think it doesn't really matter. We can also change how much like grass or sky is in the reflection by adding in a mapping node right here, plugging this in and it will break uh, unless you plug in a texture coordinate. So we can plug in one right here, texture coordinate, and you want to use the generated one like that. You just want to change the Z value right here. You can see as the value goes higher, it's going to push it further and further into the sky. And so you can customize your reflections a little that way. Now let's turn transparent on. And now we can trace a reference. So I'm just going to tab into edit mode right here and select everything and delete it. I'm doing this in edit mode. So we still have our setup and our object right here, but I want to bring in a reference. So my reference is just my name drawn in really squiggly letters. And that I made this in a previous blend file. So if you want, you can take a screenshot of this right here, or you can just find some text anywhere and trace over it. Um, you can use a font, you could, you know, draw it in a notebook and take a picture of it and bring it into Blender too. But basically I'm just going to select my curve, come over here and you can either draw the way that we have been like this, just trace over it. Um, but if you don't want to do that and you want to be a little more deliberate, you can use the curve pen tool right here, which I believe is pretty new. Um, and you can just click and drag like that. 
And if you want to end this and start a new one, all you have to do is hit Alt A to deselect everything. And then you'll be able to start a new curve like that. You can also just click on, you know, points to select them again like that. So make sure you deselect before you start adding other curves. Now, if we have something like this that we want to be circular and is connecting back to itself, when you get back here, you might be left with something that looks like this where the handles are not straight. Um, you can change that by hitting V that will change the handle type. You can change it to automatic and then they'll be flattened out like that. And if you forget that shortcut, just go up to control points and you can see we have set handle type here. So you can use it without the shortcut or it'll just tell you the shortcut right here also. So I'm just going to run through and, you know, trace this out. If you want, you can also just hit E to extrude like that. Okay, so I have it all traced. We can just hide our reference image now and see what that looks like with Chrome. I think it looks pretty cool. Um, if we want this to be even more blobby and random, um, we can use a noise texture to distort it. So I recommend adding that after you turn it into points because you'll have more uh, you know, geometry to actually work with when it's turned into points. So we can add a set position over here and we can plug a noise texture into the offset. So bring in a noise texture. And if you want, you can just plug the color directly into the offset and that will start distorting it and turning it into, you know, basically looking like liquid like that. But I like to add a few nodes in here for control. We can add a vector math node. First, I set it to subtract and subtract by 0.5. This makes it so um, it doesn't float away when you turn up the strength. And we can change the strength by setting this to scale like that. And now you can use this to control the strength. You turn it down lower. It's a little wiggly now. Um, I like to turn the detail all the way down, maybe set it to something like two, something like that. And if you wanna have a lot of fun, you can set this to 4D and animate this W value right here. What I like to do is just plug a scene time node right here, use the seconds into the W. And when you hit the space bar, it will just animate automatically like this. I'm already working on adding a tool like this to ScribbleGen, which is a product on Gumroad that I made that's all about using curves to make things like cobwebs and cables and stuff. If you want the file that I made in this video or any of my videos, you can find them on Patreon, along with early access videos and coupon codes for free products. I also donate a portion of the profits to environmental causes each month. I'd like to thank my patrons for their support, and I'd like to thank you for watching. Have a good one.